Hello everyone and welcome to this talk. The title is You Know Nothing, Jon Snow, OpenStack Troubleshooting from a Beginner's Perspective. Some of you have probably seen Game of Thrones and you are familiar with the title of the presentation. Igrit in this picture was a remarkable woman who lived north of the wall. Throughout the series, she says, you know nothing, Jon Snow. Well, several times. And Jon is one of the main characters and Jon knows a lot of things. He is a skilled swordsman. He has a political and a strategic mind and he has charisma and leadership skills. But when Jon is faced with a new situation, meeting new cultures like the wildings that he does not understand, he looks like a noob. However, soon enough, his skills and previous experience will help him to understand and deal with these new cultures. I find this analogy uh, fitting uh, people starting to work with OpenStack. You probably worked as a sysadmin and you did your share of troubleshooting uh, Linux services. You can probably read the log file. But when you start working with OpenStack, it feels uh, very overwhelming. It's a multitude of projects and it's hard to find what's wrong and where before gaining some experience. This is a session about troubleshooting and I will share some of my personal experiences and advices and I hope this helps. My name is Elena and I work for City Network. City Network is a company based in Sweden with uh, approximately 50 employees. And City Network is a uh, cloud service provider. And our competitors are AWS, uh, Google Cloud Platform, and uh, Microsoft Azure, amongst others. It's crazy to think about it this way, right? Um, I'm a troubleshooter and I worked in the front lines for many years, interacting with demanding customers and fixing the problems they reported. Well, demanding means uh, some operators from Japan that expect details and details of details to accompany any technical solution. Or American telecom operators uh, keen on overly detailed written procedures with a lengthy approval chain before they apply any change in their live systems. Now, there are many problem solving strategies and methods. And I wish I could come in front of you and say that I found the three steps approach that solves any OpenStack problem you will ever meet or run into. As much as I wish I could say, I found a one page solution to Fermat's last theorem. You know it, right? It says that there is no integer greater than two that is a solution for this equation. There is no silver bullet when solving a problem in OpenStack, in an OpenStack cloud. And it took 300 years, 100 pages, and a remarkable person like Andrew Wiles to come up with the proof for this theorem. In this talk, I will present three problems and the steps I follow to solve them. Define the problem, establish a few hypotheses of a possible cause, test this hypothesis, apply the solution, and document the solution. Now, let's look at some problems. The first problem, a customer sent a ticket, and they say they cannot connect to port 1521 on VMB from VMA, but the ping, but ping between the hosts, between the two hosts is okay. They also say uh, the problem must lie with the OpenStack Neutron and they need help to figure out what the problem is. Step one, define the problem. My first advice is do not fall for the uh, confirmation bias. This means do not jump at asking for Neutron logs because someone said 
the problem must be in the OpenStack Neutron, ask for logs and command outputs to confirm uh, and define the problem. Ask for Telnet to port 1521 from VMA and VMB. If the service is not running, we would not want to miss that. You can use host names instead of IPs if, you, if it's needed. Many times, uh, Telnet or curl are not installed on a node or a VM, and you're not allowed to install them either. So you can test if a port is open uh, by using cut and uh, dev TCP, like in the last example here. Does ping work all the time? Ask for output of a ping command. Try also ping with bigger packet size, prohibiting fragmentation and the shorter time interval between packets. That's the ping that the last one in this picture is the ping that helps you to find out the path's MTU in case this is an MTU size problem. And this is what I got back. Do you see what the problem is? So the service is not running. As Rosella Splendido says in her talk on troubleshooting Neutron, when someone says I cannot ping a VM, check if the VM is up. You should totally check her, uh, her talk on, uh, you should check out her talk on uh, Neutron troubleshooting. Surprisingly, the service running on 1521 uh, was not up. So start the service and the problem is solved. This was an example of uh, solving a problem from step one, where we try to define the problem. However, don't skip the, the uh, document the solution step. You might think that there is not much to document here, but don't close the ticket with simply problem solved before making sure the communication with the customer is recorded in the ticket. The questions you asked and the replies you received should be in there. Someone by be, uh, bumping into this ticket later on might learn something about asking questions in a clear manner as a minimum. The lesson learned here is try to understand what the problem is by asking short and clear questions. Note that uh, if there is a time zone difference between you and the customer, it might take a day until you get the reply. So if the questions are not formulated in a clear manner, you will lose an additional day to clarify what you asked for in the first place. Don't ask, send me the security groups, which might have been the problem in, the case, in this case. You can ask instead, send me the output of this command. Customers use hit templates to deploy many resources in one go. So with this command, you need the stack ID only. Then you can filter on security groups and you can gracefully pipe the output to some XRX magic to get the security group rules. And you will get back this. So now let's check if we have a rule for the port 1521 and we have it. It's been there all the time. Yep. Moving on. A second problem. Now uh, a customer sent a ticket saying that they rebooted the first out of three OpenStack controllers and they lost access to it. In this case, the controller was a VM, not a bare metal controller. So it's time to ask some questions. Don't ask, what did you do? What did you change? From my personal experience, the interlocutor switches to defense mode. Your question reads, what did you change to break the controller, you incompetent person? Ask instead, how do you access the controller? And I sometimes try to stay away from yes, no questions because that's the easy way out. So I don't ask, you mean you cannot SSH? If you cannot SSH to the controller, ask for the console, the console logs. 
or you can ask the customer to connect to the VM using the Verge console and send you the output. Step two, establish a few hypotheses. The console log showed these messages and it seems the VM, the VM hangs on boot. Uh, and that's because some disk drive is no longer ac uh, accessible and is no longer attached to the controller VM or there is some mis misconfiguration in uh, etc fs tab. Step three, test this hypothesis. Boot in single mode and check out the etc fs tab file. Step four, apply the solution. Remove the offending line if the customer agrees and reboot the VM. If not, you will have to, to fix this misconfiguration. Some months ago, someone added a line to FSTub to mount a shared device and back up some files to a remote destination, which does not exist anymore and causes the VM to hang on boot. Write the solution in uh, short sentences in the ticket. Um, you can add command outputs and log snippets, and you, you should create a wiki page too because someone else might run into this, pre this problem later on. And it's helpful to have a well-written solution on how to recover a controller or a VM that won't boot when something is wrong in uh, FSTub. Now let's look at a third problem, and that's the uh, recurring type. A customer sent a ticket and they say they observed slow access to block devices hosted on the backend storage for some of the VMs. On other VMs, they cannot access the block devices hosted on the, back sto on the backend storage at all. The rest of the VMs are working fine, no problem with them. No problem with them. Step one, define the problem. Start with the VMs that cannot access the block devices at all. How are they spread across computes? Here is an example on how to filter for the computes where the VMs are running. And this is assuming all VMs belong to the same heat stack. List resources filtered on Nova server, pipe the output to XRGs and extract the hypervisor hostname to get the computes names. Alternatively, you can look through a list of all the VMs and extract the hypervisor hostname again, given that you have the right privileges. You should ask for uh, kernel logs, dmessage, and uh, syslogs from the computes hosting the VMs that cannot access their block devices. So these logs might show why the devices cannot be accessed or perhaps some other errors. Step two, establish a few hypotheses of a possible cause. Here's an idea. If the VM cannot access the block devices on the storage backend, it might be a networking problem. So look for log entries concerning the storage network interfaces. The D message log shows several, several entries like this one. Step three, test this hypothesis. The storage interface uh, seems to be down, so try to bring it up. It worked and the VM can access the block device again. Step four, apply the solution. Apply the same fix for the rest of the computes or problematic interfaces. And the computes, uh, on the computes where we have slow access to storage, you can try to reset uh, the interfaces with errors in, in the logs. Step five, document the solution. Write a wiki article where you detail the symptoms of the problem. Um, and for sure, add the logs with the relevant entries and the fix. Write short sentences and add command output and logs. 
I personally uh, like the uh, Red Hat knowledge base at uh, access.redhat.com. Well, when they don't hide the solutions. So um, we came all the way to step five. However, the problem is not solved. A few days later, the customer sent a new ticket saying that they see the same issues happening again. Some VMs face slow access to block devices and some cannot access the devices at all. We never found the cause for this problem, so we merely have a workaround. If I try to deactivate and activate back the problematic network interfaces, it will be a matter of time until the problem shows up again. I do not want to get another ticket from this customer, do I? So when you start working with OpenStack, I can highly recommend you find yourself an expert. Everyone knows who they are. Uh, it's a person with some years of experience that can help with almost any technical problem. It's also the person that everybody wants a piece of. So, and in most cases, it is the person that writes excellent documentation. Ask for, he ask for help if you get stuck but prepare your, prepare your questions thoroughly. Make sure you can coherently define the problem. Have the logs ready in case someone needs to check them. By doing this, you don't waste someone else's time. And in my opinion, in my opinion, it's a matter of showing respect. To further investigate the problem described earlier, you might need to to log into the customer production platform. You can, of course, keep asking questions, but it will take a longer time to come to a solution. So we go back to step one, define the problem. The problem seems to be limited to some, uh, some, some computes only, because it happens on 12 computes out of 168. So let's look at the network interfaces on these computes. They look like this. So we have two interfaces for the control network. They are ETH0 and ETH1. Then we have two interfaces for the storage network, ETH2 and ETH4. And we have two interfaces for the traffic network. The storage network interfaces use the kernel driver and you can see their device name in this output. The traffic network interfaces, the ones that don't have a device name, use the DPDK driver, the technology to offload TCP packet processing from the operating system kernel to processes running in, in user space. And you want this for higher performance. The last four interfaces uh, share the same bus. Look at the PCI addresses. So, 0, 0, 0, 83, 0, 0, something. The network card looks like this, or approximately like this. So we have network interfaces controlled by the kernel driver and network interfaces controlled by the DPDK driver on the same physical card. We move on to step two now, is establish a few hypotheses of a possible cause. The problem showed up on the computes having this particular network interface cards installed on them. So we assume it is related to this NICs. Step three, test, test your hypothesis. We ran iperf on the NICs with the ports controlled by multiple drivers and observed first uh, packet drops on the ports controlled by the kernel driver and, and the lower TCP throughput, and the uh, complete traffic loss due to TX hang on the ports controlled by the kernel driver. Step four, apply the solution. We raised the bug report uh, towards the manufacturer of the network card, and later they provided a patch that solved our problem. Well, it was not just one patch, it was a few patches. 
It's time to go back to the wiki page and update it. Specify that you can restart the interfaces as a workaround. To solve the problem, you need to load a newer driver provided by the network card manufacturer. And the nicest thing you can do is to share this problem with the world. Write it on your blog or tweet about it or make a video and, put, and upload it to YouTube. Okay, so I'm running out of time here and I hope you find something useful in this talk. I'd like to thank a few people before I leave. And special thanks goes to Florian for teaching me excellence every day. Um, thank you, Costa, for the first interview and for giving me the chance to start working with OpenStack. Thank you, Klaas, uh, Angelo, Murti, Hans, and many others. And it's great to learn from the best. My slides are available on GitHub. Okay, and uh, thank you for listening, and I'm ready for your questions. <laughs>